So starting this off, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do and anything else that you want to give us really? And then, uh, yeah, we can get the ball rolling from there. Yeah, what I do, what I do is not really long at really, just like I started four or five months ago, but this is what I do in really digital world right now. But before, as just a person myself in everyday life, I was kind of some devil's advocate, you know, always wanted to bring some attention to some parts of things in, in life for people. And then I thought to myself, I got to do it. I can't go on like this and I have to just start bashing on people's belief system and bashing on people's ego because it's just like really getting out of control, at least for myself, you know. And I want to really live a life that is meaningful for me. So if I'm going to be just communicating with people every day and then just like really not enjoying that process because of the things that is happening in the world. So perhaps I just go and try to tell people that they stop just believing in whatever that it comes across to your life and don't believe in anything, basically. <laughs> yeah. And stop all, all even, even what I say in my videos, like don't believe in even what I say, you know. Just like become your individual self. Like what's really going on in the world is insane right now. Like no matter materialistic or spiritual, it's just like a full-blown uh, like Pandora box, right? That you can't just really close it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I just want to try my luck to let as many people as I can to know that any belief system is just kind of nonsense in a way. It's definitely nonsense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there are there is some sense to the belief systems, but the way that people interpret them in a dogmatic manner and how culture has evolved from that is nonsense, is delusional. It's completely backwards. So, yeah, your mission, your goal is to just cut through that, all the BS, and keep it real, essentially. Yeah, that's just uh, basically, that's my motto, like cut the bullshit. Because no matter what you do, whenever you're just talking to people in, in real world, it's just people always talk nonsense, you know? They just continuously talk bullshit, really. doesn't add any value to you and mm -hmm. nothing is really original anymore, you know? It's just like as if you are scrolling through that person's social media feed you already see what that person is going through what what social media they most use is it youtube is it facebook is it reddit it doesn't matter what they tell you it just shows everything that how indoctrination in different types of social medias and different worlds are just like really bulldozing through people you know it's just like eating them alive in a way and just giving them belief system continuously yep yeah man and uh once you see through it once you pierce the veil it's so apparent and you can't unsee it that's for sure the bulldozing yeah. of the bullshit <laughs> yeah you can't unsee it and that's the beauty of the awareness right and that's just what you want to bring in people's life you want to tell them look Become aware of this bullshit, and that's fine. As long as you're aware of the bullshit, I'm totally fine with it. But become aware of it, because awareness eventually will just, like, tell you, come on, man, cut the crap, you know? Yeah, exactly. You just, like, you see what you're doing, so it's a stupid if you continue doing it. So that's just what we want, right? Awareness. And that's, that's where the meditation comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. As simple as that. So would you say that is how you got in this wavelength is just through ardent meditation in your life? And with that, you can easily see through the BS? Oh, man, that takes a long time for me to tell you how I got to this bit. But, <laughs> but I will just 
cut the rent short, you know. I I grew up in a country that is people has to get highly conditioned for that country to really survive. And this is for every country. But I went under Islamic religion, which is, I would say, is one of the toughest, toughest conditioning in life. And all religions are pretty much like indoctrination and conditioning. But Islam is a little bit more because it depends on what country you are in. This can becomes a little bit intense. So I grew up, grew up in Iran, and it's just like everything was like all about religion. Like, at least you had to pretend that you're a Muslim because you could not afford to say that I'm not a Muslim. Mm. You could just like easily get in trouble, right? Especially as a child, as a teenager, you have this in your head and going on continuously and you just question things. I was always questioning things. That What's the point of this? Like, what is really the point of all this? Why everything is not accepted in this religion, in this, in this way of living? So, by and by, the more you gather knowledge and information through your life, right? And we also have internet. So back then also, it was the boom of internet. And I was just gathering my information, my knowledge, books or whatever that was coming toward me. So I could just come out of that dogma easier and think about a little bit more, let's say, scientific and just like a start rejecting all these uh, non-scientific ideas so just like yeah but that doesn't fucking make sense you know it's just like uh, there is this article that they did all these scientific experiments they got to this point that what you're saying is basically nonsense <laughs> then you just go on you fall off from the other side of the roof, you know? You're just so worried to fall off from this side of the roof and then you just go back and go back and you will fall on the other side because I saw myself that I'm falling off the science bit of it, you know? Yep. I started gathering so much knowledge, so much science to be able to have debates with people, to be able to just bash on religion and all these things, right? Basically, this theism and atheism that it was just always this clash right stop doing this to me i want to just not believe in god leave me alone right but then slowly slowly i realized that this is also some kind of nonsense that i'm following like each side of argument is equally naive that's just how arguments are built up you know it's just like you can't say which side is better than the other one. If you're having an argument, that means both sides has just their own downfalls. So I just left that bit, and somehow, gladly, I discovered meditation somewhere along the way. And that was pretty much my awakening, and it happened like through two minutes of meditation. And that was just the awakening part. That was the part that, look, you just went through that science. You went through that conditioning. You went through that science. Now let's talk real about religion. Now let's talk uh, spirits. You just denied everything. And now let's see what they were really saying, mm -hmm. you know? So I went to that part of the whole awakening right now is spirituality now everything became so juicy it's like wait a second i cannot explain this you know with science like the the first two minute meditation i had like tears just stopped dro started dropping from my eyes and i was like whoa what is this i want this and i continued doing that and it became intense it really came to me intensely it stayed with me for six months so continuous meditation for six months, I dropped everything. So I had my a small mini enlightenment at the end of it. And that just like gave me this idea of that, okay, religiousness on its own is beautiful. You cannot deny it. This thing that it happened to me and is happening to me is not explainable. 
is one of those experiences that like no one can explain it to someone else like for example it's like orgasm right everyone experienced orgasm but no one can explain it to the other one like you can't tell what orgasm feels like true and this was my mini orgasm or very big orgasm <laughs> and i was like wow this is profound this is beautiful then i went on through the path of a spirituality which unfortunately that massively failed because i realized that when you get rid of knowledge you got to get rid of wisdom at the end as well you know but that's just a problem with the world you, you just like they they cling on to the wisdom and and they don't see that also this wisdom has to go away at some point but then i think the world got back to me and i just realized that i got to go on and share my my thing you know and also i have my own visions of life and everything so everything led to another to get me to this point i guess i hope i i covered what it was supposed to be covered in your question yeah definitely man yeah yeah i like to say atheists are halfway there and i know because i was also in the same point as you uh in the religion of science right dispelling yeah. the other religions and taking on the religion of science that's you're almost there right if you're an atheist you don't believe in god keep going i thought that was the end point right i thought atheism was like oh yeah that's it i figured it out but then as you said as you go deeper within yourself really just through meditation you come to find um religions do have some sort of truth to them is actually a lot of truth to them but not in the way that the popular paradigm interprets it and really the difference i feel in a very simplistic and basic manner the difference between popular dogma and actually finding the juiciness of religion as you said is finding out that you are a part of it like this religion is not out there god is not out there god is in here god is a part of you all of what the books the bible the quran the torah whatever it is all of these books are sort of made for you that's the big difference is before it's like everything is out there all this false idolatry you know bowing down to something that is not me when the difference the big difference that comes from meditation is you start to bow down to yourself essentially the self that is in all and that is the huge switch that you come to find that is maybe you can attest to this the awakening that you kind of got the glimpse into when you started to meditate is um what you are truly a part of what all of this really is and it goes beyond words right it's truly magical it's truly a miracle but that is the big switch is finding out that we are all a part of the miracle. It's not somebody else up there that lived thousands of years ago and they're a lot holier than you. It's like no, you're just as holy as all of them. You know, you are a prophet in a way, a sage and a saint. So I feel as though that is the the big switch in the awakening that comes from the meditation journey. Do you agree? Well, it's just not it's not a matter of agreement. I can say that I I totally relate to that, right? It's just like when when you realize that you are enough, like you just don't need anything more, right? That's it. Yeah, it's so that simple. <laughs> perhaps perhaps that's an agreement, you know? It's just like sometimes facts doesn't need agreement. So I would say that's a fact, you know? That's just like something that no one else just can really determine for you that who you are or who you should be or you who you can be and also if you are this way or if you are that way you will end up becoming something better no like whatever it is right now that's it like mm-hmm. you can be blissful you can be miserable but that's it nothing more because you just see it as a different timeline which is pretty much doesn't exist like time doesn't exist you know it's just like 
when it doesn't exist and it's an agreement between human beings that we call it time. So that means it's just like something we agreed on and, and no one can explain it, right? And it can be like in that heaven or it can be in that hell. So it's all here, right here. Everything will be just timeless. And, and you are the whole consciousness. That's the only way. You cannot be like not part of it. You are just like a fraction of a whole. And yeah. this whole will never go away. This, mm-hmm. this whole is always there and you're always part of it. You might die, but you're still part of it. You, you can't go away. That's just also there are other laws of universe that the energy doesn't go away. It's just like conservation of energy. It's just like continuously changing forms. And exactly that, 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 that realization is that awakening, right? That realization is like, no matter what I do, good, bad, at the end of the day, I am part of this whole. This whole cannot get rid of me. You know, this, this whole can't just like punish me for being bad or reward me for being good. No, this whole has to exist. I have to also exist to make that whole exist. If I'm not here, that whole also will not be there. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole realization that if you understand this, you had your awakening. But perhaps... Life is the same shit that goes on forever. Like, that's, that's a different thing, you know? That's yeah. just like, that's just completely different thing. And yes, of course, you can get to the blissful part of it, but you can also not get rid of the suffering part of it. You know, if you just like see this as a whole, you gotta, you gotta take everything. You can't just like choose, yeah, I want the bliss. I don't want the suffering. Well, that's not possible. You know, it's just like the duality of things doesn't allow this to happen. But we can manage to do in a way that this suffering becomes very pleasant in a way. And this bliss will also be pleasant. That's it. Like at the end of the day, you got to realize this, but it's just like requires that awakening, right? Requires that synapses all connect together and just tell you that this is it. Look, look. Look, it just shows to you, like, look at it, you see? It's like, oh, that's it, huh? So I get it now. That, that's just like how things work. But also, unfortunately, we are living uh, in, in a world that is not comparable to 2,000 years ago, right? It's just like the infinite yeah. amount of a stimulants that you can receive in your everyday life, the infinite amount of things that come to you and you are capable of doing it it's not it's not only just like exist there you can do this you can do this a sport you can do that entertainment you can watch this tv show you can watch that tv show and you can do millions of things now so basically you just lost all between all of these belief systems that is just like take you really down and just like keep you down there until you just like say, okay, I'm done with this. I really want to come out of this misery of this continuous bullshit, you know, going on in my head. And that requires some courage, I would say, you know, and and also just like some hammering that is just like, look, you can do this, you know, you just got to look, you just got to check this bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So do you think the endless distractions and illusions of the world is what brings us into the real, into this awareness, ultimately? Like, it's inevitably going to lead us to a point of there's got to be another way, as you felt, as I felt, and as other people have already felt. But do you think eventually we're all going to get to that point of um, there's got to be another way? No, I don't think we will just get to a point that we say there will be another way and we just fix everything and it becomes another way. No, I think this will just goes on. This this evolution is unstoppable. Like we just continue and go forward the same way that we are just going. And but from now on the difference is just like in a way for past 300,000 years, let's say, from the time that Homo sapiens come, came to existence, in a way, 
everyone helps their way to pass on knowledge to go forward, you know, just like grandpas told the stories and just continuously gave this knowledge to go forward, right? Based on certain ways of storytelling and we got to a point that we could write books and everything. And all these knowledge that we have, in a way, comes from like a long lineage of people really carrying it. It's not only uh, people just see now past 50 years, past 100 years, because we're just dealing with technology so much that we just don't see that one of the reasons that I, for example, eat rice is just because, I don't know, 20,000 years ago, someone realized that rice has a really good benefit other like in comparison to 10 other seeds that can just give us more energy so this is a knowledge that came from long time ago but we just take it for granted and we got to a point that now knowledge is not shared by human beings anymore knowledge is sharing itself like now no one gives a shit about old people anymore because the world is not built for the old people the 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 world is just based on entertainment and the money you spend for entertainment, profiting and maximizing the profit. When you become 50, 60, 70 years old, now you don't have anything to offer to this world, right? Back then, you had so much to offer because you could be that storyteller or you've seen like 60 years of life and one day you remember your younger sister ate that plant and died and you can tell someone that don't eat that plant because that plant is poisonous. But nowadays no one cares because you can just take a photo of that plant, Google it, and the Google will tell you, well, this is poisonous, don't eat it. So you don't need your grandma for it. That's why we put old people in the old houses, right? Because no one really need them anymore. Like, and that's just the sad part of it. That's just like where humanity really lost its way, you know? It's just yeah. like, because we have so much knowledge. Like, we're just dealing with so much knowledge, and knowledge is just sharing itself. Now we are in disposal of knowledge. So, like 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, the knowledge will determine how we will be. It's not us anymore. Like, you can't stop it. It's, it's gone. That, you know, it's, it's just like this whole AI and everything. It's not that they will take on the world. No, they will never do that. But they will also never let you to determine what's going to be because you can't reverse it. When it's out there, it's out there. When you can have AI can do everything for you. You can't reverse it. You can't say, well, okay, Automation has to stop because we want to give power to humans. No, that's, that's not going to happen. So you have to embrace it. You have to realize that, okay, now we have AI. Now we have all these good things. So why not let these good things do the automation and we sit meditate, right? But this is unfortunately not going to really happen in a bigger scale. It's just only happened to a smaller scale. And I think that's good enough for me, you know, because <laughs> mm. I, I really don't think that this this illusion of whatever that is going on will just lead us to a point that we say, okay, now we stop it. No, that would that would not really happen in a way. But the vibration will just increase. That's definitely there. You can't deny the fact that people are awakening every single day. Thousands of people are awakening, but not necessarily they're awakening to the right part of it. They're just awakening. They're just like, they're realizing, okay, we've been lied to, but, but I prefer to live this life because it's convenient and comfortable. It, it's just like, I don't want to be a monk. I don't want to just go live in a cabin, you know, that's just like not comfortable. That's not convenient. And, and, they go on, live with the lie, even though if they want to change, they can't. We are addicted to our just teeth. Like, how can you get rid of all your addictions? Like, every human being on this planet right now, they have definitely been growing up with television. Like, how can you reverse a two years, three years old 
brain of mine that's been in front of TV and brainwashed, how can you just really reverse that in a bigger scale? It's not, it's not really possible in, like in the whole global scale that we just say people that, okay, now we regulate all these social media and everything. They will just be like, no, that's my life. You can't take that from me. It's impossible. How can you regulate things? It's not possible at all. But yeah, we're just like addicted and we just continue living that miserable life to the end, I guess. And that's just the sad part. I, I personally want every single human being, when they want to die, die with grace. Not die with regret, not die with, ah, oh, I could do this, I could do that. All these things, it's just like, because you can, you, can, you know? Yeah. You can do millions of things now these days. Like, whatever you want to do, you can achieve. But there is a cost for it, that, that continuous choice that you have to make. Mm. Mm. I think uh, I went on a big rant, huh? No, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the essence is you have to die before you die, and then you can truly live? Okay, if I get what you exactly mean by that question, you mean like the second birth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rebirth of things, yeah, that's that's definitely true. That's just like, there is no other way. You need to get to a point that you can reset, reset factory, you know? And that's just that awakening for so many people. Or perhaps a little bit above that, maybe that's the enlightenment, you know? That's just the reset factory forever, you know? It's just like you drop everything that was in the past and you create the new information of yourself, you know? You create the new reality of yourself. And that's just how it works. There is no other way. If you really want to start fresh, you got to refresh. Mm. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And does it come from the recognition that you only got one shot, at least in this body, maybe reincarnation is a thing, who knows? But at least in this physical vessel that we feel ourselves in now, does it come from the recognition of feeling that this is it? Honestly, no, because this, this body has the infinite possibility of being in the moment, right? So if you look at being in the moment, this body never ends. So this time never ends. So you have like gazillion amount of times in your life, possibility of becoming enlightened. At every single day in your life, you, you have the capability to become enlightened. And that personally has stopped me to think that just this is it, you know. This is the only chance that I have to really become enlightened or blissful. No, I would say you, you, like, you have infinite amount of time, even after... You, you think that you're dead, you know, but that's just like, for now, it's, it's, it's future, it's not now. So whenever you think about your dead, it, your death is just in the future, and, and it's not there. And at this moment, I would say, live it. I wouldn't say this body or this life. I wouldn't put this in a box, I would say, the moment, I would say, like, here, now, at this moment, anyone can become enlightened and anyone can possibly become timeless. Yeah. Mm. Like, at the end, doesn't matter what you do, good, yeah. bad. Like, at the end, even Hitler, it just momentarily passed and went away. Yeah. It did its part, really did destruction, really just really brought that consciousness down to its knees. It's like, don't do it. Come on, man. Like, this is insane. This is just like what you're doing. It's, it's just obviously not so 
you know, in your center. You're just doing something that is not in your center. But at the end, what happened? Really? Like, I don't think this, this Hitler is in hell, for example. I, I, don't, I don't think about just like, he, he will get that punishment. No. Consciousness will just go on and do its part, you know. Perhaps he's a dog now. I don't know. But <laughs> who mm. knows, you know. It doesn't matter is what you're saying. The end and the beginning is now. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I think. I get that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, I don't have much else to say. You know, sometimes I come to points in the conversation where I'm like, okay, it's now. It's always now. Yeah. We don't really need to say things. That's just the beauty of life, you know. We just put things in word because that's the only mean of communication, at least to some extent. But most of communication is also wordless, right? It's just yeah. like we can be together and be just like very communicative. But but now just this digital world, if we don't talk, perhaps people get bored and you can't really put that in a video, you know. All these things, it's just conditioning. Otherwise, we could just be here, sit here together, not talk about anything, and that energy goes on just spreading, right? But perhaps no. And, and that's also another funny part, that we just go on, read Bibles and Korans and all these prophets' books, right? And to me, it's like, yeah, but I think like Buddha, it took most of his time to be silent than saying something, you know? And I think that's the part that brought his disciples to a point that was just like really being in surrender with him, not the, not the talks that he was having. His being was just part of that consciousness. His being was part of that prophethood that made disciples just come in Mm -hmm. barging in because to be at his presence otherwise look at us look at all all this youtube i see like every day everyone is just like a new jesus you know everyone is just <laughs> new buddha is just popping out here and there i don't i don't know good and bad but it's just like you can see that's just like everyone can talk everyone just put up put up that video but at the end you don't know if you sit at their presence would you really be enjoying it? Would you really be able to really communicate in a being level or not? Because that mask is easy. You, that word is easy. ChatGPT can make it for you. <laughs> but, but can you really just like be at the presence of that person and just realize, okay, this person has really something to offer you know, to my being? Otherwise, words, I think it's just comes and goes and at the end it doesn't really have much value because everyone interprets it differently mm -hmm. yeah words only go so far i agree yeah i think um the highest good that can come from words or symbols is directing one back to themselves that's what i ideally try to do with my videos it's not making it about me or not try to look cool or anything. It's just to serve as a reminder, right? Serve as a, hey, just go back within and meditate. Really, it's that simple. This isn't about me. This is, I actually think that this podcast is just another distraction amongst the many other distractions, but at least it's a nobler distraction. At least I hope so because it's recognizing that it is a distraction and hopefully turning people into themselves. But at the end of the day, this is just entertainment. This is just television as we spoke of before. So the words and all the words of the, you know, the holy books, the scriptures of all the prophets, they only go as far as that. And then um, it's still up to the person at that point. You know, they, they only go, they only lead you to you. And then at that point, you still have to tread the path. So, yeah, that's what I say is that words are, um, they're just like pointers, you know, and there's many different pointers.
many different fingers pointing at the moon. But at the end yeah. of the day, they're not going to do it for you. They're not going to save you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, definitely. I would just point out something here because I think you're really doing God's work in a way. Because it, it takes so much to do what you do, right? Really, it takes so much to do what you do. And that's why I personally accept it because. I prefer to not be part of the distraction of things. I prefer to just keep it really simple. And when it comes to interviews, you know, things become out of control sometimes, you know, then you just feel about, oh, I am important. Someone wants to interview me, oh, yeah. all these things. And I joke about these things in my head that it's just like, okay, interview. I started the, the thing, the channel four months ago, and now someone wants to interview me. And that's just like, it creates that ego in yeah. the background. You should be careful that, okay, what's really happening now? And then I, I went to this channel because you sent the email and the channel. I went to the channel and I just like went through the, uh, the channel and I saw the videos and I just looked at the, some names and everything and some faces to see familiar faces because I don't watch YouTube, but I have to just see what's really happening in the self-improvement estate, right? And it's in my feed. It's very self-improvement feed. And I saw so many familiar faces, right, in your videos. And then first thing, like, naturally came to me, I, I looked into the videos to see, is there any person that you interviewed multiple times, a few times, then I saw no, okay. And I was like, okay, this guy at least doesn't have like a mission, only about one belief. Like he just wants to bring all this perspective into, into one page and into one place. And definitely is fun for him to do. Otherwise, why would you want to do that anyway? And that's nice. And I was like, let's do it because this is beautiful and this person tries to bring consciousness to the world and i think this is much more better and much more valuable in a way than so many people do it so i really appreciate what you're doing because this is what we need anyway well thank you i appreciate you uh coming on here man it's only possible because of people like you i'm just having a good time like you said doing this because yeah. i enjoy it <laughs> enjoy that's that's just the best part of life yeah yeah i think there's something too about finding the others once we're on this wavelength finding other people that can serve as a testament that this is real this is real than real and uh that's what i try to do man i just try to record testaments of people at this point you know record um almost like proof even though it's not the, the proof is in the pudding of yourself <laughs> right but i'm doing the best i can to show the world that there's something going on at this point in time with uh the consciousness of humanity so i'm just trying to reach out to as many people that i feel have that um that subtle resonance in their voice in their character and talk to them so yeah man um you're one of them. Thank you for coming on here. Yeah. I, I greatly Thank appreciate you. it. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think what else. I, I feel like that's a good note to wrap it up at, but uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, I could talk to you more. I'm trying to think. Do you have anything else you want to yeah. say or ask or anything? I mean, one thing I can add to this part that this raising uh, vibration and re raising awareness and you just also want to show that something is happening uh, is definitely... Uh, more vivid, right? We can realize that, okay, the world is coming to this point that just like something doesn't make sense in some people's head anymore. So mm -hmm. they just get to check other things and see what's really happening because this can't be life. You know, what, what we are just pursuing, this can't really be life because I've been just like really heavily conditioned and so many people are aware of their addictions and everything, right? Because honestly, like for the past 50 years, 20 years, 30 years, I think 
significantly people are becoming aware of their addictions because yeah. the addictions are also becoming more and more. It's just like it's incomparable to even like 50 years ago, even 100 years ago. It's just like impossible. And yes, definitely, and that information goes around and you can easily find community and you can easily see people that, oh, they, they feel the same. So perhaps I'm not alone. But honestly, I think this was going on for the past like 300,000 years ago as well, you know, but people were not aware of each other so long. So someone was sitting on the porch, porch and then watching the sunset, even if there were hunter-gatherer, you know, it's just like when the sun is setting and then just like they don't have anything else to do, their belly is full and they're just sitting and like they think to themselves, right? And just like, what is it that I do every day? I go just hunt this boar and bring it to my family and just what's really going on? Because <laughs> this this happened to us that we got to this point because this ne- this could not happen spontaneously, right? This yeah. has to just come from long, long time ago that people just like think to themselves that what is it that is really I'm doing? And, and that they create that problem, they create that philosophy fortunately or unfortunately they create that just like what's the meaning of all this that i do and and then that goes on spreads around and it becomes like if you look at all parts of the globe we all have pretty much cognitive ability very similar like it's not that one part of the world just like evolved to become like very highly intelligent and the other part of the world no they stayed at the bottom of that pyramid no all part of the globe even if we couldn't communicate so much together we are still just really developed a cognitive ability that was just very similar so that means someone who was sitting and watching the sunset and questioning the whole sunset someone in the east was just like okay what is this sunset really you know and that's just, again, something that we all shared, you know, that, that cycle of life. Like, mm. this cycle was really helping us to figure out things. Otherwise, if things were random, we couldn't figure out things because we could not predict anything. But just this whole planet, this whole consciousness were in our favor to just, like, figure out things, you know. It's just like, I give you all these cycles. I give you all these things. Everything comes back, you know. I give you this life, you know, goes on, life and this, life and this, life and this, until you figure it out, you know? And look at us. We are just magnificent. Like, look at the technology, man. Like, what we can achieve right now is insane. Like, it's really, I can sometimes really fathom that how crazy things are in terms of knowledge. No, nowhere in the history you could be stranded in a desert and have a mobile phone and ask, oh, this is my environment, give me survival tips. Mm-hmm. Like, this would never happen, right? Even in mm-hmm. 100 years ago, you're stranded, you're dead because you don't have knowledge to come out of it. You don't have that survival skill in your mobile phone. Like, nowhere you could just in the history go really live easily off grid by doing everything DIY just by mobile phone. Like you can create everything you want. Look at the technology that we have to create a full automation life for everyone on this planet, food on this planet for everyone, and sit and meditate all day and still there everything will be fine. This is just insane how how yeah. great everything is and this is human beings and they see everything like this it's like yeah okay look we have enough technology to be better so let's just awaken all together right Mm. but at the same time i think like technology is just like goes on just like consume us at some point so that's why my vision in life is like i am a person that i want to live with community you know with commune and my vision is like, if I cannot really communicate with anyone at this point in my life, how can I communicate with some people in like 20 years, 30 years? 
because 30 years for me is like vividly obvious what's going to happen. So I started this whole journey to create that community, not only digital, in a physical world, and that requires money and that requires everything that you can gather as a technology and put it and create your mini city, mini community that is just like off grid and just like takes care of everything. Hopefully the planet comes to this idea that we can do this for everyone, but I don't really have high hopes for the evil part of humanity because it's just got to go on, you know, the good and bad got to be together if there is no... Yeah, man, it's just like it can't, you know? Mm. At some point, someone wants to become evil, you know? At some point, someone can't get rid of that power, you know? Gotta gotta happen, you know? So I just want to be able to still live in the nature in a way because nature becomes very limited, I would say, in 30 years and just like things become very scarce in a way and natural places will not easily come in hands when it comes to a privacy, like when it comes to a point that you want to go there and be alone, really be alone. Like in Denmark, you can't do that, man. Like you can't get away from civilization so far, you know, it's impossible. You could be just like middle of a forest and just like some guy just hike next to you and just like, okay, I got to communicate with this person middle of this forest, you know, say hi at least to. So you can't really be alone in a way. And that's just also very valuable. Becoming alone in nature, it, it just heals you instantly. If you really truly feel that you're alone here and, and this nature is here with you and it's part of you you are part of it that just awaken you on on a different level on its own you know mm-hmm. we don't have that feeling anymore we don't have that primal realization of nature and survival in that head anymore because always you're just so close to the city at least the gas station you know always mm-hmm. you know that okay i'm not gonna die here you know get lost you know <laughs> Uh, and yeah. that's yeah, something man. that is really hard to really find 30 years, 40 years from now. Mm. I agree. Yeah, technology in its current form and probably going into the future is a double-edged sword. It grants us so many miracles, like literally what we're doing right now, but also grants us so many distractions. Yeah, I guess it's just... Use it in the right way. Use it accordingly, right? Use it to foster knowledge, to find the others, build a community, and grow, I guess. Um, If not, then it's going to use you. Go ahead. Yeah, it it will just, like, chew you and throw you away like... Like you're just nothing. It's just so simple. Yeah. Like knowledge can easily just really go on and take over everything. It's already did, you know, it already knowledge took over everything. It's just like so much stress and anxiety in people's head comes because of knowledge, you know, like because of Googling, because of all these things. Mm-hmm. Like you get sick, like a cough, you quickly Google, wait, I coughed this way. What does this mean? And that knowledge comes in and it's just like, oh, am I dying or not? And this is just, might sound like a joke, but this is literally it. Like, yeah. in West world, like, like, this is the first time I came to a Western world in Denmark, right? And I really wanted to experience life in West. I lived all my life in East, all my life in, in, let's say, third world countries. And then I wanted to come experience first world countries and really see what's happening. And I could see that, oh man, the convenience and comfortable this life offers you, it's really hard to get out. You know, it's just like, it's not so easy. And I came to this western world and i realized how people are just really suffering and miserable 
about petty things, small things, just like occupying their head, how to function in this civilized world. And then you just go somewhere in Nepal in a village. Man, this guy is suffering. This guy is just really working on a farm. His ass off, like one year full on, just like you really have to battle with the forest and jungle there. And at the end of the day, you look at that grace in his face. He's like, he's just so happy. At the end of the day, when he sits and he f- eats his meal and then finishes, he just doesn't talk. The fire is on. You sit there. That guy is sit- sitting there and just like, he might say only one sentence, but that's just so profound that it's just like it's nothing more is needed. But then you come to West, people are just, man, like nutcases because <laughs> there's so much knowledge, yeah. like so much knowledge. to You can't navigate through all this knowledge in your head, so you continuously overthink. Like you don't ever come out of thinking. But that person, I don't think thinks much, you know, sits by the fire and knows tomorrow, same day, same thing, you know. There is no open world gaming there for him, you know. For us, you're a gamer, tomorrow is the next day, but it's a new day, you know, because we just love that unexpected event all the time. We always go back and forth between nostalgia and novelty, Mm. and our brain is continuously want that novelty right sometimes you want that nostalgia you just drown yourself in that sorrow and good feel good energy but most of the time you want that novelty right yeah unexpected event and look at us we have everything to cover that we have tv shows to give you unexpected events we have games that to give you unexpected events we have casinos to give you unexpected events infinite amount of things to give you unexpected events and your brain loves that your brain is just gonna get addicted so hard like yeah give me this i don't know it's unknown give me and that's it that's just like also with the spirituality you know it's unknown people are just like also fall for so many things it's like oh yeah okay i believe you oh yeah that's it definitely true but it's just the unknown mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like that. Somewhere between nostalgia and novelty. <laughs> We're chasing either one. That's good. Yeah. Mm. And also to your point of uh, spirituality being another vice in a way, I fully agree. I feel like that's the last trap. And like I said, it's a noble pursuit, spirituality. It's definitely better than other pursuits, but you got to give that up too. And that's what they say in Buddhism as well. Just eventually you got to give up the dharma <laughs> that's like the last attachment is the dharma yeah or spirituality Zen. i feel that yeah. yeah 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 that reminded me of an anecdote that this zen master tells his disciple that whenever you see buddha in your meditation kill him immediately you know mm-hmm. it's just like don't let him be there and that's just how it is at some point you got to drop that as well but unfortunate part is like the addiction part, man, like people are addicted to self-improvement. Like l- literally people are addicted to self-improvement. They mm. continuously want that motivational speech. They continuously want that knowledge part of it. They want to just keep themselves going. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm listening to all these motivational speech and all these self-improvement, all these things that is going on. But they just don't put their head together that, come on, I got to do this. Otherwise, it's just like... It's just like, what? At the end, the best thing that can happen to you is the echo chamber, right? Yeah. Other than that, nothing is there really. And people go on, follow 10,000 gurus. No, this is not going to work. You got to find one guru. If you really want to find a person, a teacher, someone that helps you, find one person. But we just want all that feed of everyone. Like, give me good things. I want good bits, you know? I want shorts. I want... (laughs) reels i want all these nice quotes i want all these feel good stuff you know that's not gonna work if the real teacher is there that person will hammer you hard in a way that you just be like oh i hate zen you know yeah i just hate zen 
Yeah, it's just like that's what Zen does to you, you know. It's like mm. beats you all of a sudden, and you're like, "Why are you beating me?" It's just like to take you out of what you're in, you know. Otherwise, mm. you will not come out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I think the teacher will find you, in a way, if you really want it. If somebody really wants it, they don't want to dilly dally anymore with spirituality. The teacher, the guru, finds you. And the guru is really within, really. That's the, that's the point of all teachings and all teachers is to bring you to the sad guru within. And that's yeah. it. You don't need to buy anybody's book. You don't need to pay any money for a course online or get some coaching. It might help for sure, but you don't need that. All of this is free. <laughs> Freedom is free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but people don't want free things. That's the problem. Mm. Right? People want to pay for things. Mm -hmm. The moment it comes free, no one, no one gives a shit. Like, look at all these resources out there. Who cares? Put up a 2,000 euros course. It sells like a peanut. Because then you have something to tell me. That's why you're selling it 2,000 euros, $2,000, right? People don't want free things. That's just a problem with taking everything for granted. If it's for free, I don't care because it's free. But then mm. I can pay for it. It's good. Mm. And that's just the business aspect of things, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I, I totally agree. That teacher will find you. Although you need to be the seeker as well, right? Otherwise, if you're not that seeker, no matter the teacher can pass by you 10 times every day, you're like, I don't give a shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it might seem like a contradiction because we said if you see the Buddha, kill him. But you got to see the Buddha first to kill him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, man, good talks. This is uh, I can tell you are very uh, what's the word I'm looking for. You know your stuff. You know I like your straightforward and simple approach coming yeah. into this. So yeah, man, I, I wish you all the best it. and um, keep doing your thing. Thank you. You too, man. I, I really appreciate the effort you put to interview me, man. Hey, thank you so time. much. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to get to know you a little bit better. But uh, yeah, do you have anything else you want to say? You just want to keep it at that? I think that was beautiful, no? I think so. We had a good run, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I think it's nice. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And I think people who are watching this or going to watch this enjoy it as well thank you thank you and thank you yeah to anybody that listened this long i wish you all the best how do you say your name mamita is that your, how you say your name no mommy mommy why do i think it's mamita yeah, that's your email right yeah that was just email oh, yeah that's fine no no man names are just labels uh, even it. if i could uh, tell you not to call me i <laughs> i would but i can't you know so <laughs> Yeah, you can call me Mammy, and that's just like a nickname anyway. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you. I'll put yeah. everything of yours down in the description for people to find you, and that's it, man. Keep doing your thing. I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you so much. Peace and love. Bye. Goodbye, everybody.